Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. I feel like there should be the uh, Darth Vader music in the background, The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, he is. Can't use that because we can't afford it. He is standing rather <laughs> ominously up here at the top. Today, folks, we're taking a look at Star Wars Imperial Assault, which was possibly the biggest news and slash announced game at Gen Con. Yeah. I shouldn't say possibly. Really had people excited because even though I have discovered that many of you out there don't like Star Wars, which is difficult for me to comprehend, some people love Star Wars. Uh, a lot of people. <laughs> you are the minority if you don't like Star Wars. Well, anyhow, this is a game that is based that that is a, like a evolution of the Descent system, which itself was an evolution of the Doom system. Right. Um, and so, you, in this game, one person's going to take the role of the bad guys, and everyone else is going to be a bunch of good heroes, a Wookiee, a Jedi, a, a rogue, uh, a leader, and they're going to go through and go, try to accomplish different missions. Let me show you. Now I'm going to try to show you as much of the game as possible without spoiling it for you. There's actually the Imperial Assault rule, you know, how to play book, and this tells you the basic concepts of the game and how to play Imperial Assault. And then there's a rules reference guide, which has a lot more detailed rules if you want to know about anything in particular. Let's say you want to know about how initiative works, etc. There's also a skirmish guide, which is a completely different game uh, that can be played. And then there is the campaign guide, and I'm not going to show you inside this book at all, but I do want to show you the back of the book. The way a campaign works, and you can photocopy this page to use it, is you're going to play a mission here, the Aftermath mission. And depending on what happens in that mission, you will go to various story missions as the game progresses. But side missions will also show up. Each character has specific side missions that the, if you pick, for example, if you use Garkan here, he has a side mission that might show up over the course of the game. But there's also other random side missions, and each side mission has certain rewards, and you may want to use those. Speaking of this, let's take a look here. These are the different characters that you can be. You can be Garkon, the fierce warrior, Gideon, the commander, uh, Jin Odin, who we call female Han Solo. We have Fen Cygnus. This guy's like an awesome shooting guy. Here's your renegade here. Uh, and then we have your Jedi wannabe. Now, each of these people has a certain number of health. They have a certain number of endurance. They have a speed. This shows what color die they roll in defense. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's white. And these show different skill tests. Sometimes you have to pass a skill. So you'll roll the dice on these, trying to roll a surge symbol. So having more dice on one of these tests is, um, you want to have that more often than not. You also have special abilities here. Uh, this symbol shows that that special ability costs an action to use, and it also costs you some of your endurance. And then these are just different things. If you all take hit points equal to your health, then you are wounded and will turn your card over. And on the back, some of the stuff, stats and things might change when you turn it over. And if you're wounded again, then you're out of that mission. If everybody is wounded like that, usually that will signal the end and a loss for the rebel players. Now, this is not a real scenario. This is just me putting some of the tiles together. But there are really quite a few tiles that are included in the game. And there's all kinds of cool setups, and you can see there's outside, and there's inside, there's imperial bases and such. And you're going to start with some you know, figures, plastic figures, that match yours. And uh, let's see if we can get a closer look at these figures, because they really are some really nice figures. Here you can see some of the good guy figures. And there's also a myriad of bad guys that are included with the game. Here are some of those. The game also comes with a Darth Vader and a Luke Skywalker pack. So, um, those come included in the game. They provide some extra missions and some side missions. You can use them in the game. The Imperial player can stick in side missions too. And um, uh, they their figures. The game also comes with this figure here, which is the add-on. And this actually comes apart. The 
it comes in pieces and you snap it together and it's really easy. It just slides in and you snap the legs together and the gun turns on and it really is a very nice model. And it's used in some of the missions, which is really cool. There are a few characters, uh, like for example, here's Chewbacca and IG-88. Their figures will be coming out in other expansion packs, but you still have their discs because they might show up in various side missions over the course of the game. The game also comes with these cards here. These cards are what the Imperial is going to use for the different uh, things. For example, here's a probe droid that shows the health and the speed of that probe droid, its defense and attack, special abilities, ways that it can use surges, and there's different uh, cards, but these cards can also be used in a tactical game that I mentioned earlier, for example, and then you'll see the Rebel ones. Here's Luke Skywalker and the different main characters of the game. You'll use these cards instead of their big character cards. And when you use these, essentially you're playing a skirmish. There are different skirmish maps and players will have a deployment zone where they'll deploy their characters and then they have to accomplish some sort of mission getting points. Uh, taking opponents out will be worth points and also accomplishing different goals will be worth points. Maybe you have to get some chests and or some spice and bring it back. There's, there's uh, I believe, six different missions included in the game, but they're just skirmish, and so you'll be building a deck. You have 40 points, so you can see this probe droid costs three, but the Royal Guard Champion costs 15. Um, the Stormtrooper here costs six, while the ATST costs 14, all the way up to Darth Vader himself costing 18. But you can pick any group that you want. And so if you just want to play a tactical game, it uses the same um, combat rules and such with some minor differences. But that that's pretty much all I'll talk about that game, but it's pretty easy to understand. You have a group and you'll fight another group. The game itself, though, each scenario, you the good guys are trying to accomplish some sort of mission. It could be anything. And they're not really sure all the time what all the details of the mission because this book here is secret and things will happen over the course of the mission. See, the Imperial guy has this counter here, which keeps track of his threat. He's going to get a certain number of threat each turn depending on what the mission is. He'll be using this threat to bring in reinforcements, but he also keeps track of the rounds. After a certain number of rounds, the, it, the game might end, that scenario might end, or specific things might happen, or a door might open, or you know anything might happen, he might bring in reinforcements. But when you're playing a normal game, uh, normally, what will happen is one of the good guys will go first and then the bad guy will activate one of his units by exhausting that card that he has. And then one of the good guys will go and you'll go back and forth until both players have done all their things. When players go, they have two actions. An action can be move, in which they can move their full ability, uh, and you can move diagonally and move around, or it can be to attack. And this game has a really cool line of sight feature in which you measure one of your corners to both corners of the person that you're shooting at, and if, it, if there's nothing blocks them, then you're okay. And combat works using these dice. So let's show these dice here pretty quickly because they are really the core concept of the game. You'll notice there's different colored dice and this comes into effect if I'm shooting someone. So let's say, for example, that this guy here is shooting this stormtrooper and he gets to roll a yellow and a green die. So he rolls. The first thing we do is we check the range. The range here is the numbers added together, two, one, two, He's out of range. He misses the Stormtrooper. Don't think of that as range. Or it, it, the game calls it accuracy, which makes sense. This basically just means he missed. It doesn't mean his bullet didn't hit hard enough. But let's say he rolled this, a three. Now he does hit the Stormtrooper. So then we see how much damage he does. He does one, two, three damage. And he has a surge. And surges can be used for a whole variety of things depending on the weapons that are used. So, for example, here we see a Vibro Axe. This is a basic weapon that the... Uh, one of the characters starts with, or no, actually, um, yeah, one of the characters starts with, and it's a red-yellow die, but if a surge, pierce one, I can ignore one enemy army, or cleave one, I can hit someone who's next to the person that I hit. So surges can be spent to do various things. The opponent then is going to roll either a black or a white die, or maybe even a combination. When they roll, they're looking for defense. So let's say the stormtrooper rolls one black die, I did three damage, he blocks one of those, so he takes two damage total. The black die has one, two, and three, and also has this symbol here, which cancels the surge. The surge no longer works. The white defensive die is not as powerful as the black one. It, has, it can block one damage, and it has a lot easier chance of canceling a surge, but it also has this symbol here, which means you completely dodge the attack. 
So a white die has a chance, a one out of six chance to completely dodge an attack. And so that's how attacks work. And so the good guys can move, they have two actions, so they can move twice, they can move an attack, they can attack twice, they can open a door, that's an action, they can interact with something on the board, they might find one of these crates here and inside those are not great weapons, but different things that might come in handy. Uh, like for example, this shock grenade. Well, that might be a useful thing or this emergency med pack. And there's other things that they might interact with. There might be a computer terminal that they have to reach and do something with. There's all sorts of things that players will handle, but each of those things are gonna be different compared to the missions. And players will be going back and forth trying to blow each other up too, because there will be bad guys showing up on the board and trying to eat you and do all sorts of nasty, mean things to you. Now each character comes with their own deck of cards. And in this cards, you're gonna start with your starting weapon. So for example, Gideon here starts with a holdout blaster, which has a chance to pierce two on uh, the whenever he rolls a surge, and it rolls a blue and a yellow die. But as each mission goes, you're gonna get experience points, and you can see here at the bottom that there's various experience points. For example, after the first mission, he might get an experience point. So then he has called shot, where he can exhaust his card while he's attacking or a friendly one. If the target's in my line of sight, he gets an extra surge. All the way up to this really good card here, Master Stroke. He can exhaust his card after you resolve command. Um, and the command is one of the special abilities he has on his card where he can have someone else take an action. You can perform an additional command without using an action or suffering the, the cost on it, which is really cool. So basically, that's a, it gives him an even more special ability. And each character has all these different cool special abilities. And again, I'm not trying to spoil those for you. You find those out when you play the game. These abilities do not come into play in a tactical game. They're only used here. Another action players can take on their turn is they can rest, which will heal up their exhaustion and possibly their hit points. See, there's exhaustion and there's hit points. And you'll see here that, for example, Gideon has 10 health and 5 endurance. Many things will cause exhaustion. This command symbol here where he can tell someone else to do something costs 2. So he'll put 2 on us and he can only take 5 endurance. If he's forced to take endurance, beyond that he'll start taking health points. When he takes a rest action, he'll heal 5. First you heal endurance. Uh, first you feel ex exhaustion and then you heal hit points off a character. So you do have a chance to rest and heal and lick your wounds in essence. When a mission is over, players are going to get different rewards and things. The rewards might be an ally card who will show up uh, for the good guys. Maybe you, you've done one and now Han Soul will have a possibility to show up and help you in future missions. Or there's a whole rewards deck that has all sorts of uh, delicious, wonderful combat things. Like, look at this force pike. Isn't that great? It's a red and two yellows, and there's all sorts of other neat things in here, and you'll draw from a specific deck depending on what scenario you're in. And then after that, players will be going to the next scenario. And again, the scenarios are going to change based on how well they did in each mission and what side missions that they've decided to take. Um, and there's a whole pile of cards here, and these cards have different missions. Like for example here, if you do this target of opportunity, you will now have the Rebu Saboteur will be an ally to join you. If you do a simple task here, the reward will be the Adrenal Implant Reward Card. So this is great. Lots of rewards and good things. But that's not it. The bad guy is also involved in this game. And so he is going to have a set of cards that he's going to be adding to and being able to use these. And these cost experience points too. And so he's going to pick one. He might pick military might. Or he might pick technological superiority. Or he might pick subversive tactics. So each of these is different cards. And so maybe his maybe the stormtroopers have jet packs and they're flying around with those. And you got to be careful for that. So that's basically the whole thing in a quick gobbledygook. You're trying to get to the final mission and beat it, and then the good guys win or else the bad guy wins. Uh, there's other things I showed you. These are command cards. You'll be using, making a deck of 15 of these and using them in the tactical game. So the tactical game not only has you build your force, but you also build a small deck of cards. And there's a lot more goodies inside this, but you'll have to play the game to find them out. Well, hmm. Really? I mean... Uh... You couldn't do something that hasn't already been done? So... I mean, come on. It says Disney on the back. That's kind of cool. Wow. Disney and Fantasy Flight Games. It's almost the best thing of the box. 
psych! What are you, crazy? I don't think we should give away our opinion too early. I just did. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, let's say that you never played Descent and you're getting into this and you haven't played before. You, I, I think you're really going to enjoy this. This is really impressive. Let's talk about components first. Okay. The models are really impressive. Yes. I was really impressed. The, the ATST was, that was, you'd assemble that one, but it just snapped together. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. Right. Thank you, Flying Frog and other companies. Take note. I don't want to use a knife and glue. I just want to put stuff together. Alrighty then. That's right. But I mean, it looks, I haven't painted mine, but I want to, because these look like they're yeah. really paintable. Yeah, these are, the, the molds are fantastic. Uh, they have a lot of detail to them, so you can you can paint these to your heart's content. You don't have to because they are so detailed. You can tell them apart very easily. They don't gel together like some other games do. But uh, the the models were absolutely phenomenal. Very well done. Now Chewy, Chewy looks like he had a Botox. Uh, uh, Not Chewy the. Yeah, Chewy. The, the, the Wookiee. No, Chewy does. I'm oh, looking Chewy. at the pictures, and Chewy looks like he has a Botox <laughs> done to his lips. But. Well, I, mean, I was going to say, I like the artwork. Just like the other Star Wars games that they've done, they're not using stills or anything from the movie. Instead, right. they're using drawn artwork, and whoever does it, I mean, if you just look at the, the picture in the box, yeah. it just looks super fun. Well done. Um, the tiles fit together really well. They yes. have a nice background. There's tons of pieces. The dice are good quality. And it's your typical Fantasy Flight production. Absolutely. And you really do get a lot in the box. Now, they do include the Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker packs, right. which technically, since they're including them, they're not really packs. But it's kind of to show you what the packs are like. And um, that's well, we'll get to that near the end. I'd like to talk about the ex expandability and, and forwardness of the game. Absolutely. But let's just talk about the game in a box. I really think they've managed to put Star Wars in a box yeah. I, I, without the air battles and all that stuff. So right. X-Wing X covers that or maybe the new Imperial Armada. It's definitely ground battles, yeah. You can't... But, I mean, you want the excitement of Luke and Han sneaking on the, onto the Death Star trying to rescue Princess Leia. Yeah. That's the kind of missions these are. Exactly. One thing I like about this is it's not a go through and kill everything. Right. If you try to do that, you will probably lose. You will lose. Because the bad guy can keep bringing stuff in, mm -hmm. and it has such a strong storyline. Yeah. You open a door, you never know what's going to happen. Exactly. Or Very exciting for me. Yeah, the thing, the thing that I like to really, um, initially, initially, okay, i got to play this some more, but initially the thing that I liked better than Descent was the, was the idea that the, the, the bad guys aren't just pushovers. Um, I felt like in Descent. Oh, I know it. In Descent, you could you could really just kind of railroad a bunch of those guys, and you'd win. You'd, you'd do fine. Here in Imperial Assault, no, nah, you got You you've got to pick and choose your battles. You've got to be wise uh, about what you try. Well, to Stormtroopers might don't. be a pushover. Yeah. But even a lot of stormtroopers still makes you go, huh? Yeah. Maybe it's time to get out of dodge. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you have. Two or three stormtroopers there, and and uh, you've only got one dude in the room. Yeah, you're not, you're gonna get hurt. It's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna feel it. Um, so that's one of the things that I liked that Imperial Assault did. It made the game more tactical, uh, it, to where you did not have to think that you just have to. You gotta. I, if I move here, no, maybe I want to move here. And there's so many different uh, choices, I guess you could say, that, that, that need to be made during the course of a mission. And you got to get done quickly because yeah. most of the missions have this kind of ticking clock. Time. You never yeah. know when something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, if you played Descent before, this is very similar. The biggest changes are on the dice. There are now icons that can cancel surges, which is great. I hope they introduce a die into Descent that does that. Good. Um, also, but there also is a very good flow. One bad guy, one good guy, one right. bad guy, back and forth. That's that's another. That was my second point of the things that that it did better than Descent, I think, because it's not just because. I mean, the bad guy can, on a good on a good turn for the good guys, the bad guy can really have very little to do on his turn. With uh, the the good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy uh, turn sequence, then it seems like the bad guy is going to have more opportunity to use all of his people. Yeah, no, yeah, and and I, like I like he said, I felt like I had some instead of having a bunch of cannon fodder, right. I had some actual real characters out yeah. there. 
And speaking of that, that's another thing I love about this game. If you play through the whole campaign, you'll play through some of the side missions and most of the, about half the story missions. But there's still the rest of the story missions yeah. and a ton more side missions. Yep. And then the choice between side missions. Like, you had a choice. Like, do you want Chewbacca to join your team? Or yes. do you want the Jedi to get her lightsaber? That's a, <laughs> okay, but that was a tough Who one. wants the Jedi to get their lightsaber? I want Chewie. But really, though, I mean, that is, yeah. a, that is a tough decision. Yeah, it and is. it also means if you win a scenario, the reward is really cool. Yeah. And, and if it, you lose, you think about what you could have had. <laughs> Because that's what we did. We were like, ooh, ooh, well, at least I get this. And it's like next to nothing. And, and it's neat how the, I felt that the, I think there's five different characters in this game. I felt like all five of them were very different. Yeah, they all. Chewbacca, they all, they I mean, all I, we keep calling Chewbacca. The Wookiee is a tank. Right. The Jedi is also, is pretty close to being a tank, in di but in different ways. It's not quite a Jedi at the beginning of the of the. Of the, of the, the Jedi like, wanna be. You have to be. A, you have to find your lightsaber. Well, that's kind of cool, though. I guess so. it gives story to the game. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, but you're supposed to make your lightsaber. You want to make your lightsaber before you go to the fight. All right, well, let me quick do a, a sidetrack here from the game for briefly and talk about the skirmish game. Um, uh, the skirmish game itself is a pretty decent game. I would rank it a 7 out of 10. Um, well, I would rank the base game somewhat higher. We'll get to that. Um, the, the skirmish game is very entertaining, though. I like building my army and going up against someone else's. It's not an army. It's like a tactical combat, and it gives you an actual mission to do. It's not just blow up the other person. It might be going and get these crates and get out of there. Go in and get to the ship first and launch the ship. Things like that. And so it's very interesting and, and I can see as they add more units that it's going to be very fun to see the different forces. You'll be able to play any kind of fantasy setup. You want to take, you want to see if Darth Vader and IG-88 can take out Han Solo and Luke, you can play that. And as they add more and more characters, that will be a really cool thing. Right. But I will say that for me, the skirmish game is a secondary entertaining thing to do with this. I'd rather play the main game. Yeah. The skirmish game is some, probably something that if you only have two people, uh, then then take out the skirmish game. But uh, And it's neat that there's two games in a box. If you've got, yeah, if you've got more than if you've got more than two, then you, you, you tackle the campaign missions or, or whatever you want to call them. So I can see that. I'm 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 okay with that. It's not a, a huge selling point for me, but it is definitely cool that there's two different ways to play the game. And that's not unheard of from other games as well, but it's, it's cool that this one did it. Now, some people might be upset, and I can see how if you want to play the skirmish game, you're going to have to use some counters. And you have to yeah. use some counters in the game for IG-88, Chewbacca, Han Solo, and all that stuff is going to come out in different packs with plastic miniatures right. that you can buy, and that will give you more missions and more things. I can see some people being upset about that, although that would have raised the price point of this to really high ends. True. You get a lot of plastic in here, but you'll be able to expand this. Some people will hate that, but you don't need to buy that stuff to play the game, but 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 you're going to. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking Are you going to not buy Han Solo? Nah. I can't even imagine Sam not buying Han Solo. I mean, it's... Han and Chewie are, are kind of shoe-ins, but the the... I was just thinking about that before you mentioned it. The, the, it's, it's, it's like it's a marketing uh, business ploy. They're going to make more money uh, making those characters extra packs. It's kind of uncool for the customer, but at the same time... This would cost hundreds of dollars. I, I know. That's what I'm saying. This this would have, this would this would be like 120 130 bucks probably. But let, I do want to say, though, I think... If you bought this and only this, you have years of play in this box yeah. without having to buy anything else. So don't feel like this unless is not a complete game. It, unless you play it every day for well, that's like true. four months straight. Well, you might be tempted. I'm telling you. Yeah. We played it, and then they said, next mission. We play it, next yes. mission. <laughs> I was like, uh, we'll be here all night. Yeah, the only, I don't care, said the one guy. <laughs> yeah, the only reason we didn't continue is because we wanted to get some other games to the table. <laughs> Uh, and so it was almost by compulsion that we didn't do this. It's a great story. We wanted to continue playing. Period. So for me, I'm uh, this. The rating I'm going to give this game. I know a lot of people are going to ask me, is it a descent killer? And and for me, not really, because I love the set. And I love the fantasy feel, and I think there's room in my collection for both. I can play sci-fi and I can play fantasy. Now the story in this one kicks Descent all over the place. Because Descent's interesting and fun, but I don't feel as involved in that universe. I know yeah. Star Wars. Right. But Descent also has like a billion different monsters I can pull up, so there's a lot of cool variety of magic spells and such. Right. In Imperial Assault, though, 
it's Star Wars, man. So <laughs> I feel, and I could be wrong, but since Descent is my current number three game of all time, mm. I feel that this is already in my top ten games. That's how strong I, this one gets three lightsabers up. I, we're, not, we're not even allowed to give that, and I'm doing it anyway. That's how much I like this game. I think it's fantastic. I'm keeping it, which is sad for Sam. Uh, <laughs> but, That's what he thinks. <laughs> yeah, but I really love it. It is The thing is, I was predisposed to like it. I came in thinking I was going to like it, yeah. but it was even better than I thought. Yeah, we're, we're definitely... Uh, we are definitely, uh, yeah. oh, what do you call it? Uh, we're, the, we're the target audience for this. It's yes, like, exactly. We, they they could have put it on the back. We made this for Tom Vassell. Yeah, exactly. We, we definitely have a, a, a uh, lean towards this already because we're Star Wars fans. So uh, it was almost a slam dunk for us. Uh, the only, I mean, you would have to try really, really hard to put a game that has this symbol right here on it. That symbol right there, see that symbol? That one right there? It's a fancy They would symbol. have to try very difficult to make a Star Wars game that I did not like in some way, shape, or form. Well, okay, but they have made us the Star Wars card game. We like that, but you don't, you're not gaga over that. No, I'm not. Uh, but again, I'm not gaga over a lot of card games, whether they're... But I am Wars over this, is what I'm saying. Yeah, this is, yeah. But, and we played other... We played yeah. Star Wars Queen's Gambit and yeah. Star Wars... Uh, what's the other one? Uh, the, the one where they fight each other with dice. Um, Epic Duels. Epic Duels. And I like those games, yeah. but they don't come close to this one. This oh. is Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, and I think those are both fine, fun games. Yeah. But this one this one has that thing where it's like, oh, look at these cool scenarios, but it feels realistic. Yeah. You know, Epic Duels was like, hey, it's the Emperor vs. You know, Luke. Uh, or I'm sorry, the Emperor vs. Han Solo. Why, why did that happen? Emperor wins. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of just silliness. This, though, when Darth Vader shows up in this, Takes your guys are like, holy crap, yeah. run! Run, Luke, run! Yeah. Uh, okay, well, you gave it three lightsabers. Yeah, that's, that's what you were going to do. That's a lot. No, I wasn't, because you haven't even found your first lightsaber. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the, gonna, I'm I'm gonna the bad this. guy. I got my stuff. Well, if we're going to three, I'm going to give it three. Uh, no, I'm going to give it two quad laser batteries up because that's eight. And so that's eight thumbs up from me. Beat those lightsabers, yo. Okay, this is coming out soon. Uh, we'll be in stores. If you like Star Wars, get it. If yes. you like Descent, Dungeon Crawl stuff, get it. If you like science fiction and like Star Wars a little, get it. Um, I, have, I have one one thing that I... A guy asked me, if you can only purchase one, do you get Descent or do you get Imperial Assault? If you only can purchase one, do you get Descent 2.0 or do you get Imperial Assault? Are we saying just the base games or the entire <laughs> systems that are out? Uh, See, because he, when didn't, he, had, he didn't delineate. All right, well, then we have to go base game. Base game versus base game. Yeah. Um, right now, because I am a Star Wars fanatic, I'm getting Imperial Assault. But maybe you're not the Star Wars fanatic. Maybe you just like Star Wars. But you also like fantasy. You got to make that choice. I'm not going to make that choice for you. I will say, though, that I think they made some improvements on the descent system yes. here, too. The yes. surge cancelers, the back and forth, one person, right. one person. There's a more of a tactical feel to it, and that's something that I enjoy. Maybe you do, too. Uh, I, I think this is... Uh, I'm not going to say it's a better game, the Descent 2.0. I'm going to say that it is a more tactical game. Than Descent 2.0. And if you like tactics, then this is your Huckleberry. If you are not really caring that much about tactics and you just want a dungeon crawl, then Descent 2.0 would be your Huckleberry. All right. Well, thanks for that boring analysis. I love it. Love it. I love it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock.
Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.